Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React Time, Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. Together we're two of the Office Blokes. We do it, are indeed. It is, it is true. Yeah, yeah. just down to two. Office Bloke Daz is, um, what is he? He's getting his head polished. <laughs> I'm not even going to clarify that. I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> I have no idea. He's not here anyway. That's all I know. Yeah, he's not here. He will be soon, though. Don't worry. Um, right then, seven things I'd never seen before I came to the US. Hmm. Uh, Feely, Feli, Feli from Germany, I guess is the girl whose channel yeah. it is. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, I don't think we've reacted to her before. No, I don't think so. But it seems like she's got quite a few videos like this and, you know, decent numbers and stuff. Yeah. All oh, right, okay. So, yeah. Worth a go. That'd be interesting, yeah, why not? Let's have a look. Seven things I'd never seen before I came to the USA. Mm. I think tax, you know, the, like the price of something isn't the price of it. <coughs> I don't That's know right. I don't know if other countries do I, that. I think it can vary from state to state as well, can't yeah. it? The amount of tax that you pay on goods when you're buying them, I, I think. You, you know, I feel like it may have been like that in Canada when I was there. It's like right, the pre-tax okay. price and then you, it, it tallies up at the checkout and yeah, you pay a bit right. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, I wonder if that'll be on there. Let's check it out then. Seven things I had never seen before I came to the USA. Yeah. Let's do it. Hey, do you think we could stop at an ATM? I need to get some cash. Yeah, sure. There's one right over there, actually. And here we go. Here, give me your card. Wait, what is this place? Hmm? Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but since the fall of 2016, I've mainly been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And during that time, I've had lots of experiences with cultural differences. As you guys know, since that's what this channel is mainly about. And some of those experiences were situations where I was like, what is that? Or what is this thing for? Which often made me sound like a little child discovering the world for the first time, but that's pretty much what it was because there were quite a few things that I had never seen in my 22 years of living in Germany. And that's what this video is gonna be about. So here are seven things I've never seen before I came to the US. Hmm, wonder why she's blurred out all the social <clears throat> media tags and stuff. Not sure. You can do that. I was wondering what, why you can, myself. But. You can do it in YouTube while the video is live. Yeah. So like you can go back and retrospectively blur things without yeah. having to pull the video. Well, why would you want to though? Normally people want you to go to those sort of places, don't they? Your social media and things like that. I didn't check when the video is. Actually, no, you know right. when it was released. Yeah. A couple of years ago. Right, okay. Maybe she's just changed name, brand name. Maybe, channel, yeah. All that sort of stuff. Could be. Drive through ATMs or something I've never seen before. Though, yeah, I've got to say. I've not seen one. I mean, I didn't see one when I was in New York either, but maybe they're just in certain places. But I don't think it. I know that the roads are busy in New York, aren't they? But yeah. I, don't, I don't think when you go on holiday to New York, you particularly rent a car or anything, do you? Yeah, no. It's like public transport all the time. When yeah, I there. guess so, yeah. Yeah. The first thing on my list is drive through ATMs. And before I continue, I just want to give a disclaimer for the whole video. These are my personal experiences. I'm sure some of these things do exist in Germany somewhere. I'm sure there is a drive through ATM somewhere, but I personally, growing up in Munich, I had never seen that before I came to the US. And here, it's a pretty common thing, just like anything drive through in the US, drive through pharmacies, coffee shops, liquor stores. And I've heard that there's even a drive through wedding chapel in Las Vegas. So just a couple of weeks after I first came to Cincinnati for my exchange semester in 2016, I was in the car with a few friends and we were on our way to this event hosted by the university with a concert and food trucks. And we wanted to get some cash before we got there. So my friend said we're stopping by an ATM on the way there. And I was mind blown when we pulled into this drive through ATM a few minutes later and we could get cash without even leaving our car. I was like, wow, Americans really don't like to walk. I had never gotten cash <laughs> from a car before, but since then I've done it many times myself and I do have to say it is very convenient. <clears throat> There's like a drive through post box near us. Is it? Yeah. Well, sort of, I think it is anyway. 
because it's just <laughs> I just drive onto the pavement uh. and you can reach out and put your letters in yeah, that's it's at the end of a road that's, that's very, very quiet yeah <laughs> and you can just reach out and the lazy get honestly the second point on my list has to do with driving as well and that's because people just drive a lot more in the US than they do in Germany especially compared to more urban areas in Germany here in the US except for major cities like New York cars are the main way of getting around. Distances are long because this is just a huge country, public transportation is pretty poor or doesn't exist at all, and people can drive at the age of 16, which is pretty important here because in most places you really wouldn't be able to get around otherwise and you would be dependent on your parents forever. So it's very common in the US to drive everywhere and even in bigger cities here in the Midwest, like Cincinnati, you won't see many people walk or take a bike or public transportation. And with that also comes that you'll see people stand at stoplights, sometimes even in the middle of the street on the median with a sign held up. And when I first saw that, I automatically thought it was a hitchhiker. So I was like, wow, there's lots of hitchhikers in Cincinnati until I realized that they were really homeless people. And on the signs, they were describing their situation and asking for money. So what you'll see is that when a driver driver is waiting at a red light and wants to give them money, they'll just roll down their window and the person will walk up to the car and take it. And of course, it's not like I had never seen homeless people or people asking for money in Germany, but in Munich, you'll usually see them on the sidewalks, in the pedestrian area, in subway stations, or wherever people might walk by rather than at stoplights. Before we move on to the next point, I'd like- mm, That drive me crazy. Yeah. Like it's sat in traffic and you try not to make eye contact with someone because <laughs> we, we do have like people that try and clean your windscreen sometimes. Yeah, does, does people do that in Manchester? Is there? I've never come across it myself. I must admit, but there's a cup near um, near Regent Road. I was going to say Salford. I know I know that's always a really really busy yeah. road with I've, busy I've, junctions. I've had people try it there and it's like you've, they've just got a dirty rag in their hand and they're just yeah. like, and I'm oh, like, no, yeah. ah, leave it. <laughs> just leave. put your wash wipe on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you don't know about it yet, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of classes where you can either discover new skills or you can deepen existing passions or you can just constantly launching new classes. Cruises. With that, let's move on to the third thing on my list that I had never seen before I came to the US, and that is koozies. They look like this and are a pretty normal household item here. I'd say most people have at least one of these at home. Many people have dozens of these at home. We have now. We've got some, some yeah. from Texas, didn't we? We do, yeah. Absolutely. I think they're a big thing in Australia as well. Oh, are they? Right, yeah. okay. Because they're not really a thing over here, I don't think, are they? Oh, no, I, can't remember, I can't remember seeing them anywhere, but... A can of beer isn't supposed to last that long. So, like, you over, by the time you've opened your can and put it in that, you've drank it and yeah. you've got another one. Yeah, definitely. So, like, we drink too quick <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah. for fancy things like That's that. Thing, yeah. um, but I personally had never seen that before I came here, and I had no clue what they were for when I first saw them. But as you can see, I do have some koozies myself now, because they're a pretty popular giveaway item and merch item. And they're mostly used when people drink beer or other alcohol you put your can or a bottle in this thing and that way your drink stays cool especially in the summer i've actually mentioned koozies in my video on alcohol culture and in that video i said that they keep your hand from getting cold since drinks here are usually extremely cold and i said that because that's the only reason i've ever used them but the official purpose is actually to mm. keep your hand from warming up the drink and not the other way around so i just want to get that straight Fair why enough. don't we have them in if you've got a can of lager in your hand long enough for your hands to warm up the can... You're drinking too, so, you're, too you, slowly, you, you aren't you? shouldn't be drinking beer in the first yeah. place. <laughs> it should be, should be banned from it. <laughs> yeah, it's you nonsense. definitely have to have it cold, though. You know, if I, I'm mainly lager, as you know, yeah. but it's got to be really cold for me. Yeah. Really cold. Can you imagine if you were in Germany, though, and like at one of the beer halls, and you grabbed the beer and put it in one of them? Yeah. You'd start another war. You'd struggle <laughs> sometimes because some of them massive to stand uh, yeah, and everything. You couldn't put a stand in one, <laughs> could you? a big like, pillowcase instead, wouldn't yeah. you? Something. But they, they take the beer seriously over there. Absolutely, they, so. yeah, yeah. In Germany, I'm not 100% sure, but I'd assume that it's because we're not afraid of our drinks getting warm as much as Americans are. And we also don't drink out of cans a lot. And I believe that cans warm up faster than bottles. 
Hmm. This one I actually didn't really notice until 2018 when I got my master's at the University of Cincinnati and taught German there at the same time. Because when I did my exchange semester in 2016, I never actually had a class in a normal classroom because the program was called electronic media and I mostly just took video and audio production classes that were taught more in a studio setting. But then when I taught German two years later, my classes took place in normal standard classrooms and that's when I noticed these things on the walls. Most classrooms have one of these attached to the wall and I was completely lost at first as to what this is until I saw someone use it for the first time and it's a pencil sharpener. And before you ask, yes, we do have pencil sharpeners in Germany too, but it's not very common for German students to write with a pencil in school. I've actually talked a little more about that in this video and therefore pencil sharpeners aren't really a thing that students need after elementary school. And even in elementary school I've never seen a pencil sharpener on the wall in Germany the students just have their own sharpeners again I'm sure somewhere in Germany you can find these on the wall too or maybe it used to be a thing back in the day but I personally had never seen this item before I came to the US and here it seems to be a pretty standard thing in classrooms mm. Whether it's spray butter, spray oil, or even spray cheese, Americans have some interesting food items here that I had definitely never seen before. And especially the spray stuff threw me off a little in the beginning. Spray butter and spray oil are things that I've seen in a lot of American households. Maybe that's just because of the widespread fear of fat here and people think that with regular butter and oil, they're gonna get too much of it. I'm not sure, but again, I've never seen that in Germany. And to most Europeans I've talked to, that that seems pretty unnecessary. I mean, why not use your regular oil and butter? And the sprayed cheese? I don't even know what to say to that, but in general, there's lots of things that Americans call cheese that aren't actually cheese, so that's just something that I had to get used to. Mm. I've never had sprayed yeah, cheese. No, me neither. It doesn't and look good. I didn't know they did spray butter. Well, butter. We, do, we do that over here. Oh, do they? Yeah, well, it's I've like... I've never seen it. There's like spray, sort of margarines. <clears throat> it's more, right. you know, but they are like a cooking spray. You know, like I think literally margarine do one. Right. Flora or whatever it is. Yeah. So you just spray in a pan and then you can cook straight in there. Supposedly healthier. Right. Uh, right. Okay. It's not a big thing though, really. No, I wouldn't have thought so, no. I haven't no. really seen them, but. I have those I little, you know, those sort of squeezy chef's bottles that you put loads of different sauces in. Yeah. I've got loads of them. With all my different oils in. Oh, have you? Ah, yeah. right, okay. So depending on what I'm cooking, I can grab a different ah, oil. Organised, eh? Yeah, 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 love it. <laughs> like a pro. <clears throat> this is something you see on the streets a lot that I feel like is probably not even allowed in Germany, and it's these huge pickup trucks with dual wheels in the back. In general, there are a lot of pickup trucks on American streets compared to Germany, and just so many huge cars and SUVs that wouldn't even fit through all the streets in Germany. But the dual wheels really are something that, to me, seems like the epitome of this whole land of extremes vibe of the US. US. And I often even see this in the city where it doesn't even seem like the person actually needs a truck, let alone dual wheels. So I guess some people just have it because they can. Hmm. Yeah, we don't see a lot over here really, do we? Maybe no. the odd pickup. You get a fair, a fair amount of pickups, but our pickups in general are smaller than the ones in yeah. the States. Yeah, and not many of them are dual wheels either, no. are they? Don't think. You get, you get more on like lorries, don't you? You get dual but wheel, long wheelbase vans. There's you can do on yeah, yeah, you can do on vans and you know bigger trucks, but uh, cars yeah. wise, you don't see many at all. I keep seeing things like Hummers for sale, you know, but oh, they, yeah. like they're not that expensive over here because yeah. no one wants it. They can't afford to run it. It's too big for the roads. Exactly, huge. So you get like the old Hummer H twos, I think they were called. They yeah, were, they were like the, I think they were the commercial version of it you know for everyone to drive oh, day right, to day okay. yeah yeah um i saw one of them the other day for 15 grand oh really I think it was big old vehicles though, aren't they they do you about know, eight miles i was to gonna say better, better running costs are absolutely astronomical they just don't work over here but i was looking at it and yeah. i'm like tempted nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice 
And the last point on my list has to do with cars again, and this one goes back to the fact that in Ohio and most other states, they don't have car inspections that your car has to pass in order to keep the registration. In Germany, we have a pretty strict inspection every two years called TÜV, and that's the reason why you hardly ever see damaged cars on German streets. Maybe you'll see a dent here and there or some rust, but in the US, you'll see beaters, so broken cars all the time. You know, cars that look like they just got out of an accident where there is the bumper missing or half of the hood or the side mirror and that was definitely something that shocked me in the beginning to see cars like that on the highway because it's just not something you'll ever see in Germany. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Very good. That was my list of things I have never seen before I came to the US. Of course, these were just a few points of many, so let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. And of course, I also want to know what things were new for you, either when you first visited the... Yeah, all yeah, right, that's very good. Yeah, I never knew that, that they didn't have to have tests on cars and things. Uh, I didn't. That we have to have a yearly one, don't we? Yeah, we MOT. MOT every uh, year, which I, th I think is right, to be honest. Yeah. but. When I drove to Cornwall and back uh, the other week, I've never seen so many broken down cars in my life. Oh, really? Yeah. Literally, wow. like the hard shoulder was just littered with people yeah. with the bonnets up, hazards on, yeah. all stood over the barrier next wow. to the car. It's, it's weird because MOT every year. I know cars break down and I know things happen, but... Maybe shit. it's more summer holidays where people are just travelling that little bit further. Maybe yeah. more things happen, I don't know. I mean, in general, you don't get a lot of broken cars broken down on the motorways like you used to we don't think it, it was like that i even i spoke to my dad when we got to cornwall because he drove down in yeah. a separate car and i said when was the last time we saw that many cars broken down and he was like in the 70s maybe 70s and 80s yeah, yeah you just get a hell of a lot more yeah there was, it's unbelievable I, I must have seen at least 50 broken down really cars on wow. The way wow it's mad but maybe people neglected the cars over covid Oh, maybe, yeah. We didn't have to get MOTs for That's it, that was put years, off. Was yeah, it? it was sort of put back, wasn't it? So you, mm. you didn't have to do it quite as much. So, uh, yeah, could be. Could be a knock-on effect from that, I'm guessing. I think we had those pencil sharpeners in primary school. The, the like, air raid siren I can't remember ones. being stuck on the wall or anything. No, though. they weren't stuck on the wall, but I'm fairly... I've definitely encountered them. Have you? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really remember those. Definitely weren't screwed to the wall, anyway. I just don't do it with a Stanley knife now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to sharpen a pencil. <laughs> like I said, I think everyone used to have their own, didn't they? You have your pencil case. Yeah, you, know, you, have, you have your, your little, sharpener in there. Like, you have your protractor and, you know, your stuff like that. Yeah. All your weapons, all in one, basically. All the weapons, yeah, all in one place. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Right then, I hope good. you guys enjoyed that as well. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Cheers.